Hey everybody, it's Rob. Yeah. <laughs> and Richard. Yeah, I'm here too. Uh, thanks for joining us. This is uh, the AWS step function support in the AWS toolkit for Visual Studio Code launch. Um, we'd like to thank you all for joining, especially the people that stuck around from Eric's sessions with Sam. Uh, welcome, and we hope that we will see more of you. Um, today, we're going to cover all the uh, all the stuff that we launched on Tuesday, which is, to me, pretty awesome. I think the team did a great job with this. If you haven't had a chance to see it, we're going to show it to you as well. Um, quick introduction. My name's Rob. I am a senior developer advocate on the serverless team here at AWS. With me, I have Richard. I'm Richard Boyd. I'm also a senior developer advocate for developer tools at AWS. And we both stream separately here, and we both stream regularly on this channel. So Richard has a series on Monday and Wednesday uh, at 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific on the AWS channel. And then on his personal channel, uh, 8 Eastern, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then I'm here on the AWS channel every Tuesday normally at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 uh, Pacific, and on my own channel on Thursdays at the same time. So today we are going to go over everything that was in the blog post if you haven't seen it. Um, but first, so I, I'm on the serverless team, which is all of the serverless services that still have servers at AWS. This is like AWS Lambda, um, AWS Step Functions, of course, Amazon Event Bridge, um, Amazon SNS, Amazon SQS, lots of good stuff. Richard, you want to tell people about the developer tools team real quick and what they provide to customers? Yes, yeah, so the developer tools uh, organization covers um, all the code services. So this is code star, code build, code deploy, code commit, code pipeline, uh, the, all the SDKs and CLIs. So this is the CDK, the SDK for each specific language, the Cloud9 IDE, um, and Elastic Beanstalk. So these are the tools that developers use every day to get their application into production and to iterate on their application. Nice. So a lot of stuff in there, like sometimes I get questions on CDK and I'm not really familiar with it. Um, so Richard is the, the person to answer those questions for you. And I'm getting some feedback that your volume might be a little low, so I'm gonna turn you up. Okay. The, the people wanna hear your voice, the people have spoken. <laughs> All right, so again, uh, today's Thursday. On Tuesday, we launched AWS Step Function Support in the uh, uh, toolkit for Visual Studio Code, the AWS Toolkit. Um, do you want to tell people a little bit about the history of the toolkit, Richard? Yeah, so the toolkit's this extension for VS Code that we wrote to give a, a more native integration between uh, the IDE that you have locally and your resources that you're deploying to the cloud. So the, the toolkit, uh, for example, what we're going to talk about today with step functions allows you to, oh, they still can't hear me. Um, yeah, I've, t I've turned you up all the way. Can you? Um... Whoa. Whoa, let me let me turn mine down. All right. All right, sorry about that. Is that better, people? Uh, is that better? I mean, that's better. Okay, I'm going to keep talking, and if anyone says that they can't hear me, still not better. Still not better. I, I've got my gain all the way up. I could yell, but I think my wife would throw me out of the house if I did that. All right, folks. Sorry, this is a uh, it's it's a little tough doing streaming from multiple locations. Let me try something real quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna blast some other audio and see if we uh, if we can't correct this real quick. Um, it's always a good time to do this stuff on the fly. You know what I mean? Monitoring device. Let's see. Let's see how this team goes. All right. Everybody hear him now? Let's see, does anybody have a link to the blog post? Yes, and in fact, hopefully this worked. Let's see if this worked. <laughs> we get feedback from Doug Top and saying he can't hear you at all. Um, All right, let me, we're gonna try one more thing, y'all. Appreciate everybody's patience. 
it's uh, more or less like voodoo and magic that we're trying right now. So I'm gonna put this out of here. Hey Richard, you wanna you wanna talk to the people? Hi, right, can you hear me now? Can How's you hear him now? now? Can you hear him How's now? To switch mic sources. Yeah, they can hear you now. Awesome. Okay, so it's the magic of like moving speakers around. I don't want to provide free advertising, but a certain company makes a good speaker that just saved our stream. So thank you all for your patience. Um, I had asked Richard to tell us a little bit about the history of developer tools and what he does with developer tools. So uh, can you run back through that real quick? Uh, the history of developer tools or the toolkit? Everything, anything you want to talk about. It's our I, time. I, Whatever I, you I, think I, the customers I, want to hear. <laughs> uh, the customer, so, um, so quick recap up in developer tools. Uh, our organization focuses on all the code services, so code start, code build, code commit, code pipeline, code deploy. Uh, the SDKs and CDK and the CLIs. This is the Python SDK, the Ruby SDK, the Go SDK, and uh, the Cloud9 IDE for editing software. Uh, editing software in the cloud is a cloud editor, um, and, as well as Elastic Beanstalk. Nice. And uh, then we're on the, uh, the history of the toolkit, so the, the AWS toolkit for VS Code. Uh, so, yeah, someone says def foggy. Uh, Definitely, fo yeah, the audio is foggy. Um, that is, unfortunately, probably about as good as we're going to get on this one with the joint call. Uh, let me try to switch. You know how, is this, is this much better? Is this better at all? It's clear, it's clear, but I need more volume from you. I think that's the most I can do because I switched to my headphones that have switched to the other lapel facing inside. Okay. First, switch this. And. All right. We got a deaf sounds better from Ed J Geek. Appreciate that. All right, we're getting we're getting told right. to go with it, so let's just uh Okay. We should go with it. Yeah, let's let's get into the content. Let's talk about the new features. That's what everybody's here for. All right. Richard, you with me? I am here. I'm, I'm <laughs> okay, let's move forward. Let's talk about the new features in the toolkit. Uh, you want to give a quick overview of those, and then I'll uh, I'll go into a demo. Yeah. So the, the, the new features in the toolkit make authoring step functions much simpler. Uh, much uh, we give you better templates for you, so uh, you can uh, generate pre-templated step functions that you can then deploy and iterate on. We have snippets for the step function ASR. We Amazon step function language, AWS step function language. Amazon state's so language. Amazon, Amazon state's language. Amazon state's language. I yeah. should have known that before coming on here. That's all right. Uh, a little faster from the audio. Uh, yeah, so we make the snippets for better better authoring these and templating these. Right. Uh, and then you can deploy them and like execute state function uh, with better local support. It's like a very high level, but the, the extension does, and then Rob will show you how to do a lot of these specific things I very quickly mentioned. Yeah, so unfortunately, you're not going to get to see our beautiful faces while we go through this, but that's not what you're here for. Um, if you went into the blog post, the first thing we give you uh, is several new commands in the command palette in Visual Studio Code. And we're just going to start from the beginning. Like Richard said, there's a create a new step function state machine. And you get this list of starter templates that we've defined for you. If you've never used uh, step functions before, I would suggest starting with this hello world template. So that's what we're gonna take a look at real quick. Um, this gives us a fully populated state machine. It's a step functions workflow. This is the comment that'll appear in the console when we deploy it. And you look, it tells us where we start and it's got how, several- How do I install this, right? Say again? How do I install this toolkit? How do you install the toolkit? Yeah, so if you, uh, I think I put one command in there. If you go to the command palette and extensions, install extensions, you will find the AWS toolkit available directly from the uh, marketplace. 
It's the legitimate official one from Amazon Web Services, version 1.8.0, just dropped on Tuesday. And then there will be a little install button there. You don't even have to restart anymore. So that's either you click down here for your extensions and search for AWS Toolkit. That's the fastest way to install it. Cool. Um, and then, yeah, once you've got it installed, you either go view command palette or if you're a uh, if you're a keyboard junkie like I am, Command Shift P on a Mac. I'm gonna guess that's Control Shift P on a Windows machine, but I don't really know. Maybe it's Windows Shift P. I don't know. Uh, somebody somebody in the chat will have to tell us that. So, um, but then we went to create a new step function state machine and then Hello World. A couple of the other features in here. So these, if you ever wanted to know how to use a certain feature with a state machine but won't, weren't really sure what that structure should look like, this is a good way to learn that too because it gives you fully correct, complete state machines that do them. So if you want like retry a failure, then you can do this as well. And you see you've got the interval for retries, the maximum number of attempts for a retry and your back off rate. So this is a like a exponential at a power of two. So the first time it'll wait one second and then the first retry, it'll go again, wait two seconds. And then on the second final attempt, it'll wait four seconds and then off it goes, right? So it's a good way to, uh, to check out those states. Um, these other examples that we have here, the wait state, you can make it wait for a given period of time. Sometimes this is useful if you know how long something should take like a backup restore or something like that. Uh, war underscore underscore underscore. Thanks for the shout out. It is control shift P there for Windows for the command palette. Um, parallel states are when you wanna do two things at the same time. And we're gonna look at an example of this in the hello world state machine there. A map state is dynamic parallelism that was just recently launched. And that's when you need to do the same things to a whole bunch of items. So like a, a collection or a list or whatever your programming language of choice calls them. It's if you wanna run the same set of operations against every item in that collection. So like MapReduce, um, like the map function. And then uh, that's why they call it a map, right? And then uh, you can catch a failure. So exception handling within your step function and a choice state. And we've got that built in here as well. So if we look at what we got from the hello world example, this is some sort of step functions 101. We start, can everybody see the, uh, the IDE okay? Is that big enough? Text big enough for everybody, it's clear? Let me know if not and I'll, uh, I'll make it bigger. Um, yeah, that's yeah. good. Cool. So we started a pass state, which means we go down into our states and each one of these is named, right? So in this case it's pass. So our state machine is gonna start here. You could put these out of order and it would still work right, but that's just silly. Why would you do that to yourself? A pass state is a way of building your function without worrying about the actual compute and the rules. And it also lets you sort of manipulate the data. So if you just wanna make sure that you got it right, you can use this sep second feature that we talked about, this render graph feature, and you can sit with your analyst and work it out and say, is this what you think our workflow should look like? So again, you can either, we've got, this is called a code lens right here. If you see the highlight for render graph, you can either click there and you get this nice graph, or again, in the command palette, you can do render state machine. And what's cool about this is it updates on the fly. So if I wanna change this from past to like my first state, two things are gonna happen, right? One, when I click out of there, it's gonna say, wait, this isn't right. There's no way to get to this state. And then up here, it's gonna say, you have to specify an existing state, right? So since we change that, we change it here, boom. The errors resolve, the graph updates. We know exactly what we're looking at. So over here, I can move this graph around. I can sit with a business owner and say, hey, is this what you think our business process should look like, right? And if they're like, no, there's actually another state in between here where we clean the data, right? And you can put that in the hard way like I just did, or you can use these snippets. So you see, we got several service integrations here, like a batch task and a Lambda task, SNS and SQS tasks. 
um, the choice state, fail states. Uh, the one that we're going to use again, though, is this pass state, just like before. So this result, we're not going to worry about right now. A type path. We're not going to actually put the results in here. We're more just adding this extra step in between to make sure we agree, right? So for this one, we'll change that. And if you see what we did there, we just told it, look, you got to go through my first state to the past state where we, what did I say we were going to call this? Clean the data. And so now your analyst can look at it and be like, okay, we do our first thing and then we clean the data and then we check, is it a hello world example, right? So you get that agreement before you even start coding, before you like write your first line so that you know what you have is what the business expects, right? And that's pretty powerful. So another thing that we can do with this we we covered already the uh, like how you define a state machine with these, and we covered inserting states and rendering previews, um, the automatic linting. You can also just deploy this straight to step functions from here. Uh, once you've set up your credentials, and there's um, instructions for doing that in the docs, as long as you have your profile set up, you can either, again, use this code lens right here for publish to step functions, which will take you into that flow. Or you can use the command palette to do publish state machine to step functions. In our case, we're going to create a quick one because we want a new one. Now, here's a little uh, a little caveat, something you need to know here. You've got to already have an IAM role defined at this point. Um, again, this is our first release, so we're aware that some people might want to see some more functionality here. Stand by. Check this out. Okay, we got a... Yeah. Shentum Freud is digging the live viz. Thanks for the comment. We like it. Slip Dexic. Yes, this is being recorded. Um, and we'll get you, uh, it'll be on the uh, highlights later. Uh, but again, so this role is already defined in the console, this hello world IAM role. And then we need to give it a name. So we'll just call this one Twitch Office Hours. And then look at that. It's done. Like it's done already. It's already taken our state machine and deployed it to the console. So if we go over here, here's an old one that I was playing with. And look, right there, 217 Eastern, we look same time, just created, it's like instant that you get this thing, right? And you come over here and you look at the definition and it's exactly like we had inside VS Code, right? So we've got my first state, clean the data, hello world example, boom. There it is, and we can start running it right away. All right, so is that step function being created with cloud formation? That's a great question from Wayne Folks over there. Uh, let's let's find out in real time. I know what I think the answer is gonna be. Richard, do you know the answer? I'm gonna say yeah. I'm gonna say no because it went so fast. Yeah. Uh, but let's, let's check cloud formation and see. Yeah, that's, that's sort of what I'm thinking as well. But we can just check right here in the console and see if we have any stacks. Um, we have, this is not related to this. This is an old thing. So no, um, Wayne, folks, it is not being created with cloud formation. It's being created with an API call. So that's why it's able to do it so quickly. If it was being created with cloud formation, then again, you would see it like take some time, create the stack, publish the stack, wait for the chain set to be up, et cetera. All right. Uh, let me make sure I didn't miss anybody else. Seek a player. I was just on AWS this afternoon. I'm still not sure how to start a VM. Yeah, there's a lot going on there. Um, you need to read some docs. That's right. I need to read some docs. I'm reading docs all the time. So I feel you, but um, but it's a great adventure and there's a ton of power there. So uh, definitely once you get in there, keep coming back to this channel to see how you can build more quickly because we want to see you be successful. Um, all right. So we've got this state machine now, right? And we called it my first date and clean the data. But let's go back and let's say that we get a new analyst and the analyst is like, we don't like cleaning data anymore. Now we like scrubbing data, right? So we make our change. We're like, okay, fine. We'll scrub the data. Is this what you want? Sorry, that was me uh, saving the file, which I decided not to do. Notice you get the same uh, zoom controls here that you get in the console. That's pretty sweet, huh? 
but now we've got scrub the data and so we can publish this as an update and all we have to do is figure out is uh choose one here right which one do we want to update we're going to update twitch office hours and again look we're already done down here in the output window so if we go back to the console the aws management console and we reload this definition wait a minute you might think it's a new one definition ta-da scrub the data look at that it's like magic people it's like magic look how fast that is all right So that's what we talked about uh, going over. We, uh, we're gonna deploy an update. Uh, is there anything else that we should show the people, Richard? Is there anything else that the people wanna see? Oh, there's all kinds of things people wanna see. <laughs> what I'm interested in is, uh, like, uh, how can I test this, right? Like I've got, you know, this, this looks right. The analyst said, yeah, this appears right, but how can I like, pump some data into this and look at what comes out the other side to know that my implementation of what the analyst told me was supposed to do is running correctly. Yeah, yeah. Well, probably the best thing to do would be to run it um, or, or execute that state machine, right? And see that yeah. it does what you think it did. Um, yeah. What would be really cool would be if there was a way to run your state machine in Visual Studio Code, isn't it? That would be amazing. That, that, would, that would, I am glad I brought an extra pair of socks to this room because yeah, blazing they're about out. to get blown right off. Blown right off. What if I told you that you could open up the AWS toolkit for step functions, reload the step functions category there, find your Twitch office hours, right click on it, and start executing your step function right here? What if I told you that? I would, I would tell you to shut the front door. Shut the front. The front door is closed. Otherwise, the lighting wouldn't work right for my green screen. But you know what? It's true. It's real. And you have a couple choices here, right? One, you can select a file. If you have input in your repo that you want to throw into your function over and over as an integration test to be sure that it's doing what you think it is, that's a pretty good way. Um, but I like, to, I like to explore. I like to dig. I like to break things. A comment in the chat is, um, how do I just plug in perform if I had 100 plus states? How does this plugin perform if I have a state machine with 100 plus states? Um, when we were testing this, we tested it. The team is going to get mad at me, but the, the, the line was something like a 500K file. It was something ridiculous that it was tested with. So the short answer is, uh, where is it? How does this? Well, do it live three. The short answer is it's going to perform exceptionally well. Um, it's, it's going to still render everything right here in line. Uh, it was built for real world use cases and we've, uh, tested it with real world use cases. I want to follow up. I've also got some information from the, uh, the product manager on the step functions team, Dan Ronald, big shout out for this great product. Everybody clap your hands for Dan Ronald. He can't hear, but he'll know that we're clapping because that whole team did an awesome job. He's let me know that it is using the step functions APIs behind the scene. This is back on the question of does it use cloud formation? It does not. It uses the step functions, APIs behind the scene. Look, Dan, you got a lot of claps there in the room. Those are for you and the team. Great product that you've built here. So thanks for that. Um, now back to breaking things. And I'm just kidding. It's not going to break anything, but I like to like, okay, you want some JSON? What do I do? I could read the definition for my state machine. I could. That's probably the smart thing to do. Let's do that. So we look at the states. My first state is a past state. Doesn't look like it does anything. Scrub the data. Well, that's a past state. It doesn't do anything either. Hello world example. This is a choice state. So this is the first place that we branch, right? And we branch based on this logic that we provide. We have a couple choices here. Is it a hello world example? And this is our JSON path notation, right? So if there's an object in the root of our JSON object, of our state, if you will, called is hello world example, and it's a Boolean that's set to true, then we're gonna move on to the next state. That seems to be what we want. If it's set to false, we're gonna move on to the no state. Um, <laughs> excuse me, I was not fast enough yes. on the, uh, thank you. I, I could not find the mute button on my microphone. I am. I need to get better at this. So it's what we want is, nice say again? It's 14 days in isolation for you. I, well, I'm I'm in isolation all the time, so it's cool. I'm in my I'm literally in my basement. 
Um, so we want to go through this yes branch on the right, right? So we want to get into there. That means we need to set something like this true in our input, right? So if we go into our input, we just provide a key is hello world example, the value of true. And before we execute, let's jump back in the console. You know, I'm pretty sure that that's, that, that should be a capital T. Pretty sure it should be a capital T. I'm pretty sure that it's case insensitive. Let's see, shall we? Let's run an experiment. First, I want to look at this. We don't have any executions here. We'll reload this. So this hasn't been executed. Um, this is where Rob likes to show like, nothing up my sleeve. Yeah, nothing up my sleeve. In fact, let's let's run a breaking change first, right? So that we can see something wasn't right. We're just going to run it with an empty input. Execution started. Super. Can't wait. Let's see what happened over here. Got one execution and it failed. Well, it should have failed. Why should it have failed? Because it got down here and it was looking for that is hello world field and it didn't find one at all. So we see it just canceled execution here, right? It's like, well, I didn't meet the condition to go yes. I didn't meet the condition to go no. I'm going home. So we went to the house. Um, but now if we put this back in, the is hello world example field that it was looking for is true. With I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this lowercase t. We'll see what happens. I don't know. And we execute that. Now we can go back to our state machine here. Oh, now we got two executions and it succeeded. So apparently it is case insensitive. And we see just like we expected, we can inspect the state as it moved through. And we see it got that exact same input that it was looking for, right? Is hello world example true? And so we so can- I think that's some, that's some weights in here. And if I had really high throughput coming through, like what's the most number of these I can have running at a time, like by default? What's the most number of step functions, simultaneous workflows simultaneous that you can executions. have? Simultaneous executions. It depends on the type of workflow that you're running. So right now what we're looking at are classic workflows. These can run for up to a year. And I'm going to have to either lean on one of my colleagues to hopefully paste this into the chat room, even though I should have prepared the answer myself, or I can go look it up. Um, it's, it's based on the service limits in your account. No, no, it's cool. Because yeah, we can do this. For standard, standard workflows, like a million concurrent executions. But yeah, so this would be the exercise of like, if I had a question about like, what is like the, the capacity that I have by default, like this is where I would go to find you know, some of these answers. Yeah. So again, the docs are always a great place to get started. And uh, you saw me just search for these here and blow these up for the quotas. But there's actually in the Twitch channel itself, if you just do... Oops, if I could type right, just ask for the docs like I'm doing, it'll cut you a link to the, uh, th that's for, um, yeah, just like that. That cuts you a link for the toolkit docs. Um, but in general, the AWS documentation, your, your key here, you're looking for quotas. We like to call them service limits, but it's also a, a quota. Uh, and this will tell you, you know, how long your executions can run, when you'll be throttled, the refill rate and bucket size, this is related to uh, concurrent executions. And again, this is all for classic workflows. If you want to look at express workflows, which we announced last year, those are for shorter invocations. They can run up to five minutes, um, much higher throughput. And we got Sunny D 63 here telling us this is a million concurrent open executions. That's crazy. That's crazy. Did you also know that uh, classic workflows can execute for up to a year? For up to a year. That's a long time. That's a long time. That's enough time to configure one third of a Kubernetes cluster. <laughs> but yeah, no, 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 Ed, no, Ed J Geek. I will not get out. It's a year. Sorry, standard workflows, not classic. I'm getting corrected here. I'm using the wrong terminology all over the place. I'm going to, you know, after all the, the hard work that this team did to put this excellent toolkit extension out there. I'm going to lose their friendship because I'm calling the, the right yeah. things the wrong things. They're going to be mad at me, Richard. They're going to be mad. Oh, man, I, man, I feel terrible for like, taking us down this rabbit hole. <laughs> I, you know what? It's, it's okay. I got a shovel. I will dig my way out. I do want to show the people. I want to show what happens when we go down that wrong path because we got on this question because you were asking about, you know, how do we be sure that it does what we want it to do? We come back over here. 
this third execution is a failure, but it's going to be a different kind of failure from what we saw before, right? This is a straight up failure. It checked in that choice state and it saw that it was false and it directed it to no and it completed the execution, right? So this is a failure of, like it's a positive failure of execution. It's not a cancellation. So again, the, the sort of the last thing I would say here is if we did potato, right? That doesn't make any sense. It'll find the variable, but not the, um, see, I might've just kicked that off twice. I don't even know. It'll find the variable, but not one of the values that it's looking for. That's right. Look, oh, I got two. It's actually successful. You know why? Because JSON is JavaScript object notation and potato is a truthy value. So check that out, people. From now on, potato is true. Potato or false, right? Next time you have an exam, ask in advance, is this a multiple choice exam or is this a potato false exam? And then you'll know how to prepare. All right. So that's pretty cool, but you know what? There's, there's also one thing I would like to show the people, Richard. I would like to show the people how they can use this with the step functions, state machines that they already have in their accounts. And some of you eagle eyes might've spotted this when we were uh, looking at this earlier. Look at that first choice there, download definition. So Where if you, that from? That's, that's crazy, that's crazy. I had already put this into my account and now I can download the definition for that state machine and I can save it anywhere I want with any name. I could save it as potato, right? It's, it's a true JSON. It's a true JSON or JSON or JSON or JSON. Now we have potato, right? And now we can do things like execute potato, which is going to fail anyway because I've made some weird modifications to that one, but we can go back and we'll see that our potato state machine, which is somewhat confusingly named because it's actually hello world, was just executed with a failure, right? So if you've already got all of this, if you've got a ton of uh, step functions workflows in your account already, you can start using this plugin today by downloading those workflows inside VS Code, uh, gain the benefits of linting, uh, if you need to make modifications to them, if you just want to like show them to a colleague for confirmation without necessarily logging into your to the AWS management console, there's a lot that can be done there. So really, really exciting uh, update to the AWS toolkit for Visual Studio Code that they've put out here. And I think you know two two one more things. That's uh. That's about that's about as much as we can give the people, you know. So let's see. I want to check and make sure. Are there any questions about AWS Step Functions or the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio Code that we can do? Does anybody have any questions we can answer? Anybody? I'm looking. I don't see. Grant Lammy says, as a big user of Step Functions, I really love this start execution business. Hey, uh, us too, and we are super happy to hear that feedback from you. So definitely go uh, start using it and uh, check it out and let us know what you see. Helpful Robot would love to see an example of integrating Lambda into Step Functions. And Ed J. Greek agrees. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. What are we here for? Right? We're here for the people, Richard. The people want to see an example. So yeah, they, they have spoken. The helpful robot has spoken. They have spoken. I'm gonna you know I'm gonna get crazy. I've got a, a template for this. Like I, I always forget what the syntax is. Yeah. I've got like a lambda state and I can just I never get it. Like I, I end up going back to the docs over and over again. It's hard. No what, how many times I do it. What would be great? So I'm gonna do something radical here. I'm gonna take all the states of potato and I'm gonna get rid of them. Look at that. We're going to we're going to show the helpful robot how to do this in a potato. So, look, we don't have any states. We're going to start a potato. So, what would be great is if you didn't have to remember all that stuff and you could just hit something like control space. Oh, wow. And get that lambda task state there for you and hit enter and then just have this whole invoke lambda function. Now, it's not the extension's fault that it didn't name it potato. But that's the first thing we want to do is name it potato to clear up this little mismatch, right? How could the, the extension have known that we were going to name this potato? It, it couldn't have. It's just downright unreasonable for it yeah. to expect 
that we would name it potato. Oh, Helpful Robot says this is a game changer. It is. It is a game changer. The game is changed. The game is over. It's game over, man. Uh, how do you reference the ARN of a Lambda? Yeah, so um, by the ARN. No, so a couple ways here, right? Like, so we're going to be lucky here in that I deleted all of my Lambda functions, and so we don't have any that I can copy and paste here from the console because I'm a, I'm a clean-up crazy freak. Um, they would be here. Normally, I will go into the console and create one real quick so that we can do it. Now, I think what you're actually asking is, how do I reference it doing something like the way you would reference it in SAM, right? Where you have like ref lambda dot ARN. Um, that's not available today. Uh, I would say that we expect this to be a highly desired feature by customers. And the most important thing for us is what customers want. So I would just say it's not supported today. You feel me, Richard? You feel me? This is good here. Where like, even for these items that need like the, the function R, and it's, like, it's named function name originally, but it actually takes in this R. It, um, it helps the customers understand like what's being expected by putting in this template here. Where it says, That's right. Uh, on AWS Lambda, and then like the region account ID are like all caps kind of jumping out at you to say, hey, right. you should set this to whatever region you want to use, you should set this whatever account you want to, to reference it in. That's right. That's right. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over here into the AWS management console and I'm going to go to Lambda. We're going to create a Lambda function. And just because I like to tempt the demo gods, we're going to create it in Python. I don't know anything about Python. So we're going to call this Python potato and we're going to create it in Python 3.8. Oh, 3.8 is 3.8. That's the, fire. that's the hotness. I guess if you're going to do something that you have no idea what you're doing, you, you should probably do the latest version, right? Uh, Falcon is asking, is this available as a Vim plugin? Um, if there's a way to run VS code, I'm not being sarcastic here. If there's a way to run VS code extensions inside Vim, the same way that you can run Vim mode inside VS code, then yes. Otherwise, no, it's not natively available for Vim. Um, currently only available for Visual Studio but Code. I'm, I'm much better at it. Like, like Emacs would probably spread it more than Vim would, right? Emacs? Nobody uses Emacs, Richard. Nobody uses Emacs. <laughs> we all, actually, y'all, I'm so old, I call it VI. Maybe I should just call it six. Uh, but yeah, so we've got this here, and I already know the error that we're going to run into, but that's not important. What is important is now we have this ARN to put here. And so when we jump back, we can paste it. There's our Python potato function. Uh, and instead of next, look at this. It's so nice. No terminal state. You've been terminated. There's no terminal state. The state machine must have at least one terminal state, a state in which the end property is set to true. Now that's not, that's not, if you want to be pedantic about it, you could also add a success state, but that's not what the people are here for. What the people are here for is for us to set end to true, right? Or potato, as we've learned that potato is a truthy value in JSON. So now that we have this, let's check. Let's see, render graph, start, potato, end, right? That seems pretty straightforward. That's what we want to see here. Um, all right, let's publish it to step functions. Let's, uh, let's, let's give ourselves a new one keep this same role we're gonna have IAM issues here that's okay because we didn't set it up for it um, but we're gonna call it potato we deployed <laughs> we successfully created state machine potato is anybody else getting hungry I am I can go some hash browns. yeah yeah some fries maybe I don't know chips if anybody happens to be joining us from the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland uh, potato look at this look at this we got a potato Definition start potato end and our function name, right? So what we can try to do is start execution here. The input doesn't matter. And we're going to get a failure, I expect, uh, depending on what I put in my, um, excuse me, depending on what I put in that policy task. Oh, execution succeeded. That's crazy. Okay, I guess I did give it a uh, little wider permissions than I should have so it can invoke the uh, potato lambda. Uh, we didn't put you any you got some stars in that role, don't you? Say again. You got some stars in that IAM role, don't you? 
you know, why you got to call? This is like the second time you've called me out today. Hey, I hope everybody has enjoyed this joint session with Richard. It's the last time I'm going on Twitch with him. It's, it's next time he has to do a session and I'm just going to sit back and drag him the whole time. Uh, but yes, there are probably some stars uh, in that role. In fact, you know what? We've got some free time. Let's, let's check this out, people. Let's see, let's see what I did put in that Hello World role and we'll see why we were able to execute this. But we're still way back answering the question of, how do we put an ARN in? Uh, I believe that was helpful robot that asked for the Lambda. And we see that at least we did get it executed. So back on the Lambda console, we go to monitoring, we can view our logs in CloudWatch while that's working. We'll pull up this hello world role over here. I'm probably gonna have to zoom this. Yeah, okay, so we just attached the AWS Lambda role to it, which is a, uh, that's a built-in role, an AWS managed role that allows you to invoke Lambda functions. So that's a pretty reasonable role for a step function like this, right? At least for development to get it going. Um, and our potato function, we see we've got that one execution and it just, it returned some values. So let's go back while we've got the people, we see all this, it just put everything back because it had a return statement in its definition, it put everything back into the state in the body. And that's pretty interesting. Again, if you're new to step functions, um, what this did here, when it was invoked, it returned that and without a place to put it, it just put it at the top level. So we can actually see the input that it got was that blank input that we gave it. And then the output it got was all this context information about you know, here's the payload. This is what we actually returned. Some metadata related to the call, right? So pretty neat stuff. Um, if we were doing something useful, we would want to specify an output path or a result path or both and use that to manipulate the state as we move through the step functions. So um, turned out to be a pretty good example despite me not knowing Python at all. Um, uh, I remember Python Easter now. <laughs> that's right. That's right. This is going on my, uh, if you check my LinkedIn profile after this, it's Python engineer. When you add that, it will remove the title of Gopher. Oh, wow. Now I, I know at least two more things about Go than I know about Python. So, um, let me slide through this real quick. Smell what you're stepping in. Yeah. Emacs user here. Sorry, Shenton Freud. Sorry. In fact, I knew you were listening and that was just for you. That was just for you. Tons of respect for Emacs. I wrote some of my best C in Emacs on a uh, Spark Station 5 back in 1995. So nice landing there. What happens if you have a start at potato, again from Shenton Freud, but then do not give it a state name potato? Does it also lint warn about that? It does, in fact, lint warn about that. And I'll prove it to you. Uh, if we go back here, let's give ourselves some space a little bit. Start at potato, and we changed our, you know what? I've heard, I've gone paleo. I don't eat potatoes anymore. They are not nutrition dense and they're full of starch. I only eat sweet potatoes. And so now our step function doesn't lint, right? The value of start at property must be the name of an existing state. Uh, and since we don't have a state named potato, it doesn't work, right? And then once we link them up, it does. Now, one thing to be careful here, and this is just step functions in general, it's not related to the extension. We put another state in here and we call it, uh, let's make it a succeed state. This is what I was talking about earlier. But instead of success state, we just call it potato. Well, we got one problem, right? Is that we're starting at the end. So if we were to try to render this, it would just look like jump around this, but it, it saves us from ourselves a little bit here. Um, the state cannot be reached, but of course, if you had a really complex workflow with a couple hundred different states and you had one named sweet potato, like all the states were correctly named and reachable, but you were starting at the wrong point, then that would be a problem, which again is an argument for just like, Although you can put them in different order, um, probably what you want to do is have your start at and your first state so match I right there. I noticed there that it can't differentiate between potato and potato. Well, first off, potato is not a word. Um, if it were, it would be spelled this way. And then I should install a spell checking plugin that would lend it. And I apologize to the people I just offended who pronounce it potato. Um, and then uh, Shenton Freud says, that's so helpful instead of finding out when you upload. Great. Love that feedback. Thank you. We have one person who asked, does it autocomplete state names? Does it autocomplete? You know what? I don't know. 
Let's see. So if we, if we have a state named potato, potato, yeah. we do a start at, will it throw that in for us? Yeah, so let's say we put a choice state in here. We call it choice, and we got some stuff down there. Um, we got true state and end state. We'll ignore those errors for now. Hopefully, it'll still render there. And now we want to connect this with next. Will it get us to... Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. What an astute oh, wow. question. Who asked that question? Was that a seeded that was, question? That was a blue underbar. That was... Uh, wow. I'm kind of I'm kind of digging this. So, yeah, and then we just press choice state, and that comes in. And look, that resolves those problems. Next, true state. Um, we, do, we do have a troublemaker in the chat who's saying that there's not enough pie talk. There's not enough pie talk. Oh, well... Okay, so let's uh, let's let's imagine that instead of potato, we're back at sweet potatoes, and it's a sweet potato pie. I know it's not Thanksgiving. Nice. Some of y'all might not get that. Some of y'all probably are not from South Carolina. That's okay. Um, but sweet potato is a type of pie, and it's a delicious type of pie. There was another. There was a serious question up here that I wanted to answer. Does it autocomplete state names from Woo? Yes. Thanks for that one. Um, pie tato. That's pretty funny. Did you did you catch that? Shinton Freud, pie tato. That's good. That's good. That's uh, he's been paying attention the whole time. Or she. I apologize. I happen to know who that person is, so that wasn't an assumption on my part. I, I just happen to know that that person is male. Someone said wild card. Yeah, that was that state that we went over. Is there a plan, D Helena? Uh, I have not been ignoring your question. Is there a plan to build this plugin for other IDEs such as JetBrains in the future? Unfortunately, we cannot discuss the product roadmap in this venue. However. This is not the first time we have heard this request. This is a common request for customers. And I myself, dear listener, am a user of the fine JetBrains suite of products, most specifically Goland. So I am hopeful that we will listen to customer feedback and implement a JetBrains plugin at some point in the future. That said, I do not have a date or a hard, hey, we've announced support or anything like that to give you. Um, I'm... I am optimistic. But again, I will provide that feedback to the product team for you because selfishly, I want to see it as well. I mean, I would provide it anyway, but hopefully we'll get that done for you. Uh, helpful robot. If I have a Lambda showing up in my VS code, will I be able to retrieve the ARN without going to the console? When I right click, all I get is invoke on AWS and delete. Well, let's see, let's check live. We should have a Lambda here now, Python potato. Invoke on AWS and delete, yeah. Um, that's a good point. Let's, uh, hey, that hey, like something that hey, a developer advocate for the SDK team should, should be aware of. Yeah. If, um, yeah, I would take that back to the, the SDK team and, and say people are, are, customers are demanding this. Yeah. And, uh, and helpful robot points out, if you hover, you can see the ARN. It's in tiny text on, uh, on my screen there, but it's there. Um, oh, that's, that's, that's probably not as helpful as being able to copy it though. But let's see, I've got it selected. What happens if I press control C? What do you think is gonna happen, Richard? Do you think it copied it? That's, there's one way to find out. One way to find out, let's see. I'm very excited. I have no idea what's in my keyboard, in my uh, pasteboard here, so. It does not, it does not. So uh, helpful robot, thanks for the uh, request there, the product feedback. Again, since we have a senior developer advocate from the developer tools team. I am confident that your feedback has gotten to the right people. Um, what else do we have on here? Anybody else? Have I missed anybody's questions? I see there's some questions for links, but I think Ed J geek is just like slinging links left and right in here. Um, uh, Cultivirt will not follow me on Twitter at RTS Rob. I'm assuming that's because Cultivirt is an Emacs user and I have offended that person. I'm sorry, but that is a great opportunity for me to plug my Twitter, which is RTS underscore Rob. It's a great place for content. Great place for it. You want to plug your Twitter, Richard? Yeah, mine's Richard Brave with no vowels, but there is a Y. So it's uh... no vowel. Is a A E I O U and sometimes Y. Are you saying in this case it is not a vowel? Or are you saying in this case it is the only vowel? It's it's the same as my uh, Twitch username, so it's, it is it is included this time. Is it a is it a demi vowel like Maui in Moana, or in Hawaiian mythology as well? Yeah. It's a demi vowel. Yes, yeah, it's a demi vowel. It's a demi vowel. It's like the Hercules of vowels. It's the ooh. Wow. So there you have it, folks. AWS Step Functions Visual Studio Code Toolkit. Ancient Greek mythology, 
Native Hawaiian mythology. You didn't expect all these cultural references, did you? Sweet potatoes. Potatoes. Python. Sweet potato python. How did I how did I only get to this? Sweet potato python. Man. Sweet potato python. That I, maybe I'm gonna have to start learning Python, y'all. This is uh This is uh this is good stuff. Yeah, we had some uh, some culinary references to sweet potato pie to the yeah. American Southeast. Yeah, that's right. Shout out to the South. Uh, it's not quite Petey Pablo. That was that was North Carolina. Come on and raise up. But you know we're right next door. Um, any questions from anybody else? Anybody? Anything that you would like answered? Any recipes? I made a I made a stuffed baked sweet potato on Monday for lunch. I can't claim that. Uh, my smarter half made those, but they were delicious. I made a peanut butter and banana sandwich, but I didn't have any bread, so I had to use like a peanut bread. So I had some like peanut butter banana pita. <laughs> I, I literally thought you were going to say you were just sticking the banana into the jar <laughs> and pulling it out. I'm like, that's not a sandwich. Yeah, that's like, it's a popsicle. It's the banana when you try that. <laughs> All right. Okay. I think since everyone seems to have gotten their questions answered, uh, we're going to wrap it. We're going to wrap it. So uh, yes. I hope. I hope that you are ready to be shown on camera, Richard, because I'm going to bring us back up. There we go. Oh, look, bald head. Hey, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Again, let me, uh, let me run through some schedules real quick. If you enjoyed this, of course, the session before ours was Sessions with Sam with Eric Johnson. Definitely something that you want to pick up. That's the uh, serverless application model. You want to see those. Those are every Thursday at 1 p.m. He also does Happy Little API Season 2. He, right here, both of those are right here on the AWS channel. That's every other Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. The next one will be week after next, so April 14th. Um, I'm going to be here starting Tuesday doing a whole series on AWS step functions. Nothing but step functions, everything you always wanted to know and have been asking, thankfully, because it's an awesome product. So I'm going to get some answers to you. That's uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. 11 a.m. Spe uh, specific Pacific. Talking is hard, Richard, for like an hour. Talking is hard. It is tough. And then I will be on my own channel. I'll drop that in the chat as well. It's just slash Rob Sutter on Thursdays, doing a uh, a new series that I call App 2025. Why do I call it App 2025? Because this is how everybody is going to build their apps in 2025. And the beauty of this is all of this functionality is generally available today. And we have customers building with it in production today. That's gonna to be the basis for what I show you. But it's like the cutting edge patterns. So if you and your team would like to use serverless to get a competitive advantage and start building five years ahead of your competitors, delivering those features to your customers, come join for that. That'll be Thursdays, uh, 2 p.m. to 11 a.m. And Richard, you have two series, right? Yeah, so I have a um, Mondays and Wednesdays. Uh, forget the time. Uh, we mentioned it earlier on the channel. But, yeah. Uh, we, we just do live coding with uh, some of our developer tools. And then on uh, Tuesdays and Thursday nights, I do uh, more like on my personal channel. I do stuff that's a little more free form. It's just kind of me hacking on things or working on like side projects. Uh, most of it's AWS related, but it's not like strictly AWS related. So it gives me a little more freedom. And maybe some video games next to that. I'm trying to repair an old NES, so we'll see if we can get that on the stream too. There you go. Nice. Uh, I do have the times on those up. He's on the AWS channel Mondays and Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. And then those streams are on his personal channel Tuesday and Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. So real quick recap. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We showed you how to define state machines with starter templates. We went over rendering visual previews of those state machines. Uh, we inserted states with code snippets, how to do that. We did automatic linting and uh, how to deploy, how to execute, and how to download existing state machines using the support for AWS Step Functions and the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio Code. Um, thank you all so much. Cool. Please follow us, both the AWS channel and our, our personal channels. Join us for more serverless content. Thank you all for joining. It's been great having you. It's been awesome. Thanks. See you all next time.